That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about episode four of Moon Knight, the six episode series, which is streaming on Disney Plus, each episode one week apart. This episode will air April 20th, 2022. And I can think of a lot better things to do on 420 than watch this episode. Oh, well, of the four we've watched, this one is my least favorite. Uh, and this is the returning uh, directing duo, Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead, who I believe also directed episode two. You know, they are directors that I, I really like. I, I think their, their film Spring uh, got a lot of attention, I think back in 2014. Uh, and you, we reviewed Synchronic from, from these directors. Uh, with uh, Jamie Dornan and Anthony Mackie. Oh, sure. And they tend to fare better when they don't cast themselves in their own work, but I had something in the dirt uh, playing for Tiff, on Tiff's platform this year, and you happen to walk in the room, and you're like, oh, what's that? Oh. <laughs> it's them. Uh, anyhow. Okay, episode four starts off with, so last episode we know Kanshu was banished to, like, a, a statue, just like Amit is. So in the beginning of episode four, we see one of the uh, the other avatars place Conchu's little statue on a shelf. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we transition to Layla and Oscar Isaac's character on the sand because they had just done that whole turn back time thing that got Conchu locked up. <laughs> so for some reason, Oscar, I don't know if he's just like all the energy was taken out of him, but he's passed out on the sand when all of a sudden a truck comes and starts attacking Layla. She fends them off. I thought that scene was so chintzy. Because it was. Because mm -hmm. it's just this one truck, and then she uses a flare and throws it at their truck into like a box of ammunition. <laughs> Somehow. Luckily. And then it destroys those two people. Then we move to the tomb, where I suppose... Well, the tomb that the map of the constellation led them to, which is also where the scarab led Ethan Hawke's character to. Which I thought was weird because the place they are has already been, like, excavated. Like, people are already there, but they show up, and of course they're looking for Ahmet's little figurine. Because Khonshu is incapacitated, Oscar Isaac's character doesn't have any powers. Mm -hmm. So now it's Oscar and Layla in this uh, pyramid, whatever the hell they are, tomb, Dig site. The dig site. Are they in the Sahara or the Gobi? Which desert is this? I was just, I just occurred to me that. They could be in Indio, Coachella. Well, I wouldn't e know the they're difference. They're in Egypt, but I guess. Oh, <laughs> I wouldn't know. So they're down there when they come across some demon, evil, de not living dead type thing digging through stuff. They have to fend that thing off. While that's happening, Layla and Oscar get separated. So. Ethan Hawke shows up and starts talking to Layla and convinces her that Oscar Isaac's character is responsible for her dad's death. Mark. Mark, specifically. And Oscar Isaac is running around and he discovers Alexander the Great's tomb. And... Who's mummified there. Uh, before that, we get, uh, we get a explication of the eye of Horus and its meanings and the tongue of Horus. Uh, and it's that reference, the tongue of Horus, that Stephen puts two and two together. That Alexander the Great was the voice of Amit. So then that causes Stephen to open up the tomb, unwrap the mummy, stick his arm down its throat, and guess what he pulls out? Amit's little figurine. So he has it. Okay. Then... Layla confronts Oscar saying, you killed my dad. And he's like, this is not really the time to have this conversation, but they do. And I guess he satisfies her curiosity. Then we have the most clunky transition, which turns out to be a clip from a movie called Tomb Buster, which is like some old bootleg Indiana Jones. But it, it looks bad, like it looks like an old-timey thing, so we thought it was a flashback, but then the dialogue is equally as bad as the rest of the shit, right. so we weren't sure what we were watching, but we find out that it's a movie clip being shown inside of a psychiatric ward. So now the episode has turned into like this dreamscape where everyone in the film, all the characters, are either patients in the psychiatric ward or staff members. So it's all white. Everything's white. It's very Wizard of Oz when Dorothy gets back to the farm. 
But then it becomes clear that this is maybe like just in his head because we see that Mark and Steven sort of meet each other. And then the episode ends with a hippopotamus dressed like a pharaoh mm -hmm. walking on two legs. And then it says hi in like a very demure woman's voice. Bipedal. The end. A bipedal uh, hippo. <laughs> Oh, I don't know where... To, I mean... Okay, so I, I feel like I've mentioned this in a previous episode. It's just everything seems so inconsequential. Like, oh, we're going to go to the desert. Oh, we found where we need to go. Right. You know, it, it, as with Indiana Jones as a template, which I, I think it's trying to play with, if you remember those films, which you probably don't, where they're Shade. segueing all Shade, over... but true. Where they're transitioning all over the world. They show like a map usually with a, a plane going the noise of a plane and a picture of it going on the map to this uh -huh. new place. And at least it kind of gave some kind of transition here. Uh, it's just like, Oh, Oh, we're there. And to me, it takes a bit of time, I think to orient myself. And then I get frustrated because this isn't well written. So then I'm irritated that I'm even wasting my energy being right. frustrated with it. But it's like, Oh yeah, we're at, so we're at Amit's dig site. Clearly, Ethan Hawke and his team are already there digging around, looking for the statue. Right. But why exactly? I don't know. Really care. But yeah, there you have it. Speaking of inconsequential things, you know, up until... So episode one, we know there's a lady calling named Layla, but we don't know who this person is. Episode two, we find out she's his wife. Episode three, it's just like they're stomping around together. And episode four, we kind of address like the fact that they had a romantic relationship. Well, they're married. And, well, they're married, but that... I mean, it just seems so weird that, like, that's her husband who's exhibiting what I what I would think she assumes is, like, some sort of mental illness. And it's not really addressed, like, does she still love... Because she seems very disconnected from him. And then in this episode, they kiss. But she kisses Stephen. But she's kissing Stephen, like, it's him talking. And then uh, Mark gets so upset that he punches himself. Himself. I thought that was so stupid. Like, is it this was. how we're addressing the fact that that's your wife who's not acting like she even loves you? I know, because if you started acting that way and saying you were something else, I'd be very alarmed. Well, I'd be alarmed, but I'd also still have a lot of care for you. Yeah. And it's like, she doesn't seem to... Like, she's following him around almost like she has to. Mm -hmm. But that's your husband, bitch. Like, he's going through it. I don't know. I just hate the way she, that character is written, the way it's acted. The dialogue is so crunchy. The actor delivering it... It just is grating to the, me. Well, because there's all this exposition that's happening. Uh, it, even in the way that they're kind of yeah, walking around in this dig site and she's explaining things. It's like, ooh, this is... Yes. Yeah. Her explaining, like when they're in the dig site, I thought was super crunchy. I will say of the four episodes, them being d in the dig site was the most interesting to me. Like, I feel like that was an opportunity to really like show some stuff and... You know, versus in episode one where Stephen is trying to expo like give a lot of exposition about the Egyptian gods while he's in the museum, which I think in a better story would be the perfect way to deliver that. Sure. But in this one, it's just like, oh, God. Well, then all of a sudden, like, Alexander, they're great. <laughs> I need a little more orientation, as, as does uh, uh, pro probably a large amount of the audience that will be watching this who... <laughs> Might not even know who Alexander the Great is. <laughs> and he's this Egyptian mummy. <laughs> but I don't know. So we were given access to episodes one through four well in advance. So we're recording this like a, more than a month before it will air. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know when we'll get to see episodes five and six. And how much we will remember when we and do. And how much we'll remember. So Godspeed. I do know that we'll care uh, not as much. Again, <laughs> like I said, we, uh, we don't know at this point. It was not shared with us what the names of these episodes are. Oh, yes. Like, What's your name for this episode? The name for this episode is uh, Dance with the Devil in the Pale Moon Night. That's a Batman reference. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? No. Bye.